We've now gone over how to navigate in Final Cut Pro 10's environment, working in the timeline with tools, audio, transitions, titles and graphics, and how to apply effects. Now we're going to show you what to do once your product is finished. It's render time. You'll learn how to make a master file or render for a specific device and the settings you'll need to control like codec, resolution and format. Now without further ado, let's dive into the export window. You can open the export window two different ways. You can go up to File, Share. For now, we're going to go into Master File or the default. Now, we're not going to get there this way. I want to show you the keyboard shortcut to get in there, which is just Command E. So we're going to go back in here and Command E. And here is our export window. Now, it tells us quite a bit of information here. It tells us our resolution. It tells us our frames per second the information about our audio, that it's stereo and uh, 48 hertz, and it tells us our length, and then also our format, and then finally, it tells us the file size, the estimated file size, which is really nice. It's gonna tell us a title, it's gonna give us a description, who created it, and then it's gonna bring in all of the tags that are connected to the clips within your timeline so that if you're exporting, they will bring that in as metadata. And we'll talk about that in the sharing section of this course. But right now, we're just gonna be going over the settings. So let's open up the settings tab. If I click on this, now we have quite a few different things to choose from. So format, we can see that we can choose video and audio, just video only or just audio only if you're say just exporting the audio for maybe a radio ad or whatever you're making. And then you can choose some publishing options like Apple devices to computer or for web hosting. We're gonna choose video and audio because that's just gonna be typical. And then we're gonna choose the Kodak. Now, there are a lot of choose from here. And what you'll need to do is choose what is best and what fits for your current project. So if you want a really large file, an Apple ProRes 4444XQ is surely gonna be a really high quality file, and so is an uncompressed file. When you're choosing which Kodak you want, you wanna make sure to choose what fits best for what your final destination is. Now, if you're saving a master file and you've been working with RAW all along and you're just trying to get a really nice master file to save for archiving, for any other purpose in the future, you can choose a really high quality Kodak, or if you need something small like to share on the web, you might choose something like H.264. Now let's take a look here. So you have lots of different ProRes options because, well, ProRes is Apple, right? Apple creates these. So these codecs are gonna be, not only are they the optimized codecs that Final Cut likes and wants to work with, but it gives you lots of options from a really large color space of Apple ProRes 4444 all the way down to a ProRes 422 proxy. And they are from quality there from top to bottom as far as the ProRes go in that order. So the lower down that list, the smaller the file until you get to uncompressed 8-bit and 10-bit. And those are also going to be high quality files. And it really depends on what you're trying to do. So H.264 is going to be a very, very efficient codec. And it's going to make probably the smallest file out of all of these choices. But it's not a poor quality codec. So most definitely choose based on what your final output need is. Now there's a couple other options here. So there's DVC Pro HD, which is JVC's codec. You have HDV, which is kind of the standard. And then XD Cam EX, HD, HD 422, which are Sony codecs. If you need more codec options, like none of these are actually going to fit your needs, you can actually export using compressor, which is another product by Apple, and it'll give you more options as well as make it so you can render multiple versions of the same file. Now we're going to cover that in another segment, so I'm not going to dive into that at all. For now, let's choose Apple ProRes 422 because it is the optimized file format for Final Cut. And if you had transcoded just for optimization of the footage, this is probably gonna be something that's not gonna have a whole lot more compression than it already is. So next we wanna look at the resolution. Now, if you had shot this in UHD or Cinematic 4K, you would hope the resolution would be matching that. And those are default based on your event settings. So you would have set those a while ago. You aren't able to change them as well as your audio format. And then you get to choose what you want it to open 
open with. So if I choose this, you can see that when the render is done, what do you want it to do? Do you want it to do nothing? Do you want it to open up with QuickTime Player? Do you want to open up with Compressor or some other choice, like maybe VLC or whatever else other purpose you might have? Maybe you're having it open up into another program. There are just too many things to list here. Lots of options that you could choose from for all sorts of different needs. And then you could also add to your iTunes library. And then lastly, roles as. Now roles as are choosing what you want to output in your video. And this is really setting up how you want the end file to actually be. So multi-track QuickTime movie, separate files, video only as a separate file, audio only as a separate file, or reveal user presets in Finder so you can choose lots of other things. So for now, we're just gonna choose QuickTime Movie. Most likely you're gonna choose that unless you're trying to export some metadata along with it. That's it, and, and as you can see, 860 megabytes is the estimated size. And all I have to do is press Next. It asks me where I wanna save the file. So right now I'm just gonna choose Desktop, and this is gonna be version two for me and I'm going to press save. And you can see right here that just like all other background tasks, it shows the percentage that it's happening and it's showing you what it's doing. So it's rendering now 7280, and it looks like it's done. And then it opened up in QuickTime because that's what I wanted to do. That's the, the final settings. And if I played this, it'd be a nice video. Earlier, I had told you you can't change the resolution or audio format once you're exporting. And there's a workaround for that, which is creating a new project with your resolution and audio format requirements, copying your timeline and pasting it into the new one. So let's do that. We go up to File, New, Project, or Command N, and it brings up this window here. Now what we can do is we can choose video properties to custom. I can change this to any resolution we require, but I'm gonna choose 4K here. Uh, it's on UHD and we like that frame rate. Now down here with the audio and render properties, I can go custom and I can change those as well to whatever I want. So I'm just gonna leave those there because those are what I want, but I want a higher resolution. So let's label it. Uh, working in the timeline 4k and I'm gonna say okay now I have an empty project now what I just want to do is come into my working in the timeline project I double click to open it all and I'm gonna press command a to select all command C to copy it all and then I'm gonna go into my working in the timeline I'm gonna go to the big front and command V to paste and there I have it now my project is in 4k so now if I go file share master file or command E, it brings it up and I can go to settings and there they are. Now my resolution is UHD, 4K, and everything is set up the way I wanted to. So if you have that issue where you had set up your project wrong or you wanna do a higher resolution export, you can do that just by doing this simple workaround. It is important to remember though that you're upscaling the video so you're not getting true UHD resolution, but you are getting the file size. That's rendering your final project out of Final Cut Pro 10. In our next segment, we're gonna go over how to use Compressor and then how to publish your video directly from Final Cut Pro 10.